What's up everybody, how's it going? So in this video, we're gonna do something really fun, which is that we are gonna take a very close look at the software engineering projects that I had on my resume and under my belt when I applied to Google about two and a half years ago and when I got hired at Google. And we're gonna try to see what things I did in those projects that were really good, what things I did in them that weren't too great. And hopefully the video will sort of give you some ideas for your own software engineering projects, maybe give you a few pointers about what things to try to accentuate, what things to avoid, and so on and so forth. I do have to say that the title of the video is a little bit hyperbolic. At the end of the day, these projects did not actually get me into Google. There's far more that goes into getting into Google than just, you know, having a few projects on your resume, but they are a contributing factor. However, at the end of the day, the coding interviews and the coding interview performance that you that you have is going to be the main determining factor in whether or not you get into a company like Google. So by the way, if you're preparing for your coding interviews, I have to plug my company, AlgoExpert, AlgoExpert.io. I'd encourage you to check it out. With that said, let's dive into the projects. So the first project that we're going to be looking at is the one that I'm most proud of and just my sort of favorite project overall. It's this visualization tool for pathfinding algorithms. I actually showed it very briefly in a video I made recently about, you know, my first line of code to getting hired at Google. But let's take a much closer look at this project. So first of all, I guess a little bit of background. Pathfinding algorithms are algorithms that help you find the shortest distance or the shortest route between two points. So you can imagine that if you are on Google Maps looking for directions, there's probably some sort of pathfinding algorithm happening in the background to give you the best route from point A to point B. And back during my coding boot camp, because I did this in the middle of the three month immersive part of the boot camp. Me and my friend over there got really into pathfinding algorithms. And we said, hey, let's learn about Dijkstra's algorithm, which is a sort of famous pathfinding algorithm. And we would see all these YouTube videos where there were animations for these pathfinding algorithms. The animations were not amazing, but they were cool. And it was kind of interesting to visualize them. And so we said, hey, maybe we can do something like much cooler, much better. We actually worked on this project sort of together. Like we each did an independent version of what you're about to see. Like he has his own thing, but we were kind of doing it like in tandem. But yeah, it took us about like two to three weeks to do this. And so let's dive into it. So this is the home page of the project. You've got this tutorial here that kind of tells you what the project is. We're just gonna skip it for now. And then you've got this grid. And on the grid, you have two nodes, the starting node, which is this little arrow here that you can move around. And then you've got the target node or the destination node. And then you can click around on the grid to add these walls. Now, by the way, I'll put the links to all of my projects in the comments so that you can kind of play around with them at your leisure if you want. But so once you've positioned everything as you want it to be positioned, you can pick your algorithm here in the top left corner. So you see you've got Dijkstra's algorithm, this famous pathfinding algorithm, A star search, another famous one, and a bunch of others. And once you click it, you can visualize it. So here, if you visualize it, you kind of see like the, the you see the algorithm in action. You see how the algorithm works. You see how it's finding the target node. And finally, once it finds the optimal path, it will kind of show you, you see in this kind of cool animation, how or where the, the optimal path is to get from the, the starting node to the final node. And then the cool part is that you can kind of move the final node around to kind of see, oh, okay, this is what the, the optimal path would be if I, you know, moved the nodes or if like, if I add walls, for instance, like if I add walls here and then suddenly I move this around, oh, whoa, the path no longer goes through here because there's a wall. And then then you can play around with this some more, like you can kind of very visually see how A star works. A star, if you don't know, is, a, is an algorithm where the algorithm knows where the target node is, so it's much more skewed towards the target node. That's why here you kind of see, like if we we'll visualize it again, it's kind of like almost like, like blasting at the wall because it knows that the target is right behind it. Whereas if you look at, for instance, again, Dijkstra's, Dijkstra's that just goes around the starting node sort of like uh, equally everywhere, right? Because it doesn't know where the target node is. It's just looking everywhere to find it. But it will give you the guaranteed um, shortest path. And then some of the other cool things that we did, uh, we, we, we had this thing where you could add like another target. So we have this other target that we can put in the middle. So for instance, we can put it like here. And if we run, let's say, A star again, we'll put just some walls here like this. You can kind of see uh, 
the starting node will first try to find the, the other target and then it'll try to go to the final target. So this is kind of like what Uber pool might be when you've got a driver that needs to pick up two passengers and it needs to know like what the optimal path to go from one to then the other would be. So that's kind of cool. Um, then another thing that we had was this bi-directional swarm algorithm where basically both nodes are trying to find themselves and it looks really cool. And again, you can you can move it around and like you can kind of see it update in real time and everything. Another thing that we have here that's really cool is the ability to make mazes and patterns. So for instance, if we use this recursive division algorithm, we can create a very sort of visual uh, entangled maze of walls in front of us. And with the animations and the CSS and all that, it just looks pretty cool. And then of course you can move the target node. So for instance, I don't know, let's move it you know, here. You can then visualize an algorithm. Let's go with greedy best for search and it just looks very visual, right, as the algorithm goes through all the walls. And then again, the fact that you can move it here at the end and that it computes every time and everything in real time is just very fun to play around with. This sort of brings me to what makes this project good. Because overall, I do think this project is a, is a very good one and I'm not trying to pat myself on the back or to do like a weird flex or anything, but I do think that compared to some of my other projects that aren't as good, this one is particularly good. And I think they're really, five reasons, and these would be sort of five pointers that I would give you for your own projects. The first thing is that this is a very, very visual project. I mean, it's a visualization tool. And visual projects will almost always play in your favor because human beings tend to be visual creatures that remember visual things more than other things. The second thing that's really good about this project is that it has a lot of wow factor. It's pretty impressive, especially when people see like maybe the, the bi-directional algorithm in action or when they see the maze or when they see that the algorithm recomputes in real time. And I think that projects with wow factor, with an impressive aspect to them, will always be even more memorable. The third thing is that it's an interactive project. That also helps because people will remember it more when they can sort of play around with it. So something like a game or a website is almost always gonna be like a good thing to have in a project because of the interactive nature. The fourth thing is that it's easy to get. And to be honest here, this is maybe one thing where I could have improved this project. Maybe I could have made it even more palatable for people, for like newcomers. Maybe I do take it for granted a little bit, but I think that a project that is easy to understand is almost always gonna play in your favor. Or rather, a project that is hard to understand is almost never gonna be good. And then finally, the fifth thing is that this project taught me a lot. It taught me a lot about pathfinding algorithms, which in turn helped me for the coding interviews because I was more well-versed in data structures and algorithms. And also it taught me a lot about you know, creating a web app and CSS animations. If you can have a project that really teaches you something, you're almost always gonna be better off than a project that doesn't really do anything for you and that's more of a waste of time for you. Okay, so let's look at my second project now. This is another visualization tool, not for pathfinding algorithms this time, but for sorting algorithms. And it's pretty simple, pretty self-explanatory. You've got this screen here with an array that's made up of these little blue rectangles or blue blocks. You can generate a new array by clicking the button in the top left corner here, and you can change the array size and the sorting speed so you can have a very small array with just a few blocks and you can kind of see the numbers that each block sort of represents. And then you've got the four very popular sorting methods here. Let's start with merge sort. So I think that this is another example of a very, very good project. Again, not trying to pat on the back or flex or whatever, I swear we're getting to less impressive projects, but I think this is a good one. Um, and I shouldn't say impressive, I should say just good project because again, if we go through the five things that I mentioned during the pathfinding algorithm project, this project sort of checks off all five of these things. So that was merge sort, quick sort. Um, so first of all, very visual, right? This is obviously very visual, you kind of like, can see the algorithms in real time. So it's, it's just very visual. And it's got, again, some wow factor. I would say the wow factor is probably a bit less than with the pathfinding algorithm. Keep sort, maybe because um, sorting algorithms are just sort of more 
accessible to people, whereas pathfinding algorithms are more like, you know, all over the place and more, they seem like more difficult maybe. Um, but it still has some wow factor. It, so that's two things, right? Visual wow factor. It's very interactive. Again, like the person can play around with it um, by moving the array and everything. Uh, the fourth thing is that it is very easy to get. Here, I would say this project is even better than the pathfinding algorithm. You cannot not get this project. Like really, there's one screen, you just have to like resize the array and click sort, that's it. Let's look at bubble sort, by the way. Sort. The fifth thing is that this is also a project that's very useful, it teaches me something. Like this taught me so much about sorting algorithms, this is how I learned quick sort. I will say also what's really good about this project is that it was very fast to make. This took me about a week to make after the coding bootcamp. Now let's look at my third project. And this is where things start to get really interesting because this project is very, very different from the first two that we looked at. For this project, I paired up with my friend Hussein. I mentioned him earlier on in the video. He went to the same coding bootcamp as me. And we decided to create this small programming language that we called Oak, as well as an interpreter for it in JavaScript, meaning that you could sort of write out code in that programming language, run it in JavaScript and it would spit out, you know, the expected output. And then here, if you go on this replit, you can kind of see we've got the grammar defined for the programming language. This explains what a variable keyword in the programming language is, how a function call works, what a loop is written as in the programming language, from, to, with. That was our for loop. And so then if you scroll down, you can kind of see all of our code for the interpreter. There's something like 700 lines of code for the interpreter. And then if you go all the way down to line 700 something, you can actually play around with it. Here, let's see, nested from two loops. Uncomment this code out. If you run this code, it'll spit out these three for loops here. From one to three with i, from one to three with j, from one to three with k, and then it prints them out. We have fizzbuzz. So we defined fizzbuzz that's sort of a good test to see if you've got a, an actual programming language and you can run it and you can see fizzbuzz all the way to 35. We were very proud because we had a recursion. We've got a recursive Fibonacci and we can print using a from to loop uh, the first 15 Fibonacci numbers. So that was our project. Very different from the first two projects that we looked at. And to be honest, I think that this is not as good of a project. It was a good complement to my other two projects. Probably wouldn't have been great if I had done like only visualization tools for algorithms. But if we go down those five points, right, that, that we mentioned earlier, this project is certainly not visual, not at all, but that's fine. Not all projects can be visual. In terms of wow factor, it is pretty impressive, technically speaking, but only if you really get what's going on, like only if you actually take some effort to understand like all the code that goes behind it and like what, you know, an interpreter for a programming language is. And if you do, then yeah, it is pretty impressive, but you know, it doesn't have the same sort of wow factor that the other two have. And I would argue that it's probably because it has no visuals. Third, is it interactive? Not really. I mean, it is interactive. Like you can comment out the code here and stuff, but it's hardly interactive, not nearly as interactive as the other two. Number four, easy to understand. Unfortunately, this project is not super easy to understand. You have to actually read through the big introduction, you have to kind of parse this grammar here, you have to realize that we wrote an actual interpreter for it. What is an interpreter? Realize that you can uncomment out code and run it. It's not as easy to understand as, say, the sorting visualizer. And then finally, number five, did this project actually teach me something? Yes, it did. I learned a ton about how to create a new programming language, at least at a very sort of basic level. But even there, compared to the algorithm visualizers, I wouldn't say that it taught me as much or as as useful of things. Algorithms are super useful for coding interviews, so that's like really one of the best things you could kind of learn from a project. And I'm curious, what do you think? When you compare this project to the other two, what are your sort of unbiased thoughts about the project? Are you as impressed by it? Do you think that it's as good? You know, what are your thoughts? Finally, let's look at my fourth project. This is the project that I'm the least proud of, but I think that there are many valuable lessons to be learned from this project, so I'm very excited to share with you and to share these lessons with you. Ironically, this is the project that took the most amount of time and the most amount of effort to build out. This was actually the uh, capstone project at my coding bootcamp, meaning it was the last project that we did. We were given three full weeks to work on it. I was in a team of five people, four really talented people working with me. So basically the project was we created our own version or a clone of this very popular Chrome extension that you may have heard of called Momentum. This is the Chrome extension. Look, it's got three over three million users 
users. And basically this Chrome extension replaces your new tab on Chrome with a sort of special tab that has a new, very aesthetically pleasing image every day. It has a new quote every day, a sort of motivational quote. It has like a to-do list and a few other things. Now, the reason that I say that this wasn't a great project is because if you go down the list of those five things that I've mentioned over and over again throughout this video, this project doesn't really check off many of them. Is it visual? Not really. Does it have a wow factor or is it very impressive? Unfortunately, not at all. To be honest, Chrome extensions, even though they're not super easy to make, they don't come across as difficult. Is it interactive? It is. It is something that someone can sort of download and actually use. But realistically speaking, will a recruiter or will a hiring manager or a software engineer at a company, will they actually go on the Chrome store and download and try out your extension that has very few downloads, you know, very few users? Or realistically, no. So I would argue here that unfortunately that it loses all of its interactivity because there's such a friction or such an obstacle for people to use it. Is it something that is very easy to understand? Yes, the product is easy to understand, but unfortunately the way that it's made easy to understand kind of diminishes it. Like the way that we, I would have to kind of pitch it to people was we created a clone of momentum. It loses some of the appeal because it's like, oh, okay, so you just like copied something. Unfortunately, it just, it loses some of that oomph to it. And then finally, did it teach me something? Yes, there definitely taught me stuff. It taught me a lot about, you know, creating like a web app, front end components, back end components, database components, but all of the other four points kind of pull it too far down for this to have been a great project. Unfortunately here, I would argue that the, the biggest mistake that I made, because I was one of the big proponents of doing this, I kind of let my product manager hat and my sort of entrepreneur hat take over. I'm someone who at heart loves to kind of build great products and I think Momentum is a cool product. So I was really excited about that, but I lost track of the main purpose of this project, which was to be a software engineering project for us. And unfortunately, from a software engineering point of view, this was not the best project to convey, you know, technical skills or technical complexity or, you know, coding skills or what have you. That's gonna be it for this video. I really hope that you enjoyed this little deep dive into my projects. Hopefully you were able to get something out of it. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Turn on the notification bell. I'm posting three times a week. You don't wanna miss out on that content and I will see you in the next video. Smash the like button.